Well, I thought I almost caught the thieves this morning. You see an interesting thing here on our lane, our driveway. Um, tell the story real quickly. <laughs> uh, excuse me where I move things around here. So, four o'clock this morning, laying in bed in our tiny house, and um, and I was I was had got up a little bit before then. Had to go to the bathroom, had checked the wood stove and whatever else. And laying there, and I thought, you know, just kind of had my eyes closed, and I thought, eh, it's probably about time to get up before real long. We get up 4.30-ish or so. And uh, I hear this crunching, like, you know, frozen lane like we have here, you know, and everything. And, and I could hear a little bit of vehicle noise. I opened up my eyes, and I could see lights through our windows, you know. And I thought... Oh boy, the thieves are back. The good old thieves here, they're coming for the catalytic converter on the truck over there that uh, they tried to attempt to hit. There was actually saw marks on my pipe near the catalytic converter. They, For some reason, they didn't get it the whole way off yet. Um, but I'm thinking, oh boy, here we go again. And so, jumped out of bed and um, ran, grabbed uh, a rifle that I have. Um, and I, I looked out the window out here and they're parked right beside the truck, just right there on the lane. And I'm thinking, aha, uh -huh, yeah, here we go. They're going to be getting out. They're getting their hacks already. They're going to get out. They're going to hit the catalytic converter. And I thought, well, I'm going to give them, a, them an opportunity to get out of here. So ran outside. Um, Sorry to be a little bit graphic here, but all I had was my underwear. That's I was barefoot and everything else. Yeah, you know, actually, there's. You, I'll show you a picture here of uh, the little deck where I ran out onto outside of the tiny house, and you can still see my bare feet. <laughs> you know, marks where it, it was cold. It was zero degrees Fahrenheit this morning. I run out. I got my underpants on, and I fired three round burst into the air, and uh, scream. You know, yelled at the top of my lungs, "Get off my property!" and um, they start driving back and I'm thinking, okay, here we go. Uh, get ready for the next level, get the gun up. I'm ready to go. I'm thinking, you know, what a bunch of stinking psychos. Um, so they pull back is, and they said, Oh, is this so-and-so's property? And I said, no, I said, get off my land now. And so they, and they threw it in reverse, panicked, went down in here. Like you see, they got stuck really bad. Uh, went off there. You can see where they're, they were spinning here. Let's see if I can point to that. Right there, you can see where the tire was spinning like crazy. They're melting it right there. Stuck bad. Went off the lane into the area there that's not plowed. So it's a couple feet of snow. And uh, so they're out here, you know, spinning, getting everything. So I went, ran back in, got dressed as quick as I could, told my wife, get up, get dressed. You know, she was up already, but I'm saying... We had to get dressed quickly, and so got dressed. They're still out here, still stuck, and I thought, you know, okay, you had your opportunity and things, so come out, and I said, uh, keep your hands where I can see them. Um, she started, oh, 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 started taking, I said, shut up. I said, you know, are you back here for another catalytic converter and everything, and, and, uh, and turned out that what they did is they were coming up to see a friend uh, she was actually raised in this area coming up to see a friend and they got the wrong lane And I said you went back past no trespassing signs. She said yeah, but I thought it was his property So I okay. She said I haven't been up here in years So I'm not even familiar with who lives where or whatever else and You know they were apologizing and everything else and using the F word quite a bit. They were a little scared and um, <laughs> So uh, Long story short um, you know, I just don't want to say this before I go any further. Um, if you ever, if you're from the city and you ever come out to a country area, don't go back somebody's lane in at night. Don't ever do that. No trespassing signs, whatever. You don't go back. You know, just never do that. Wait till daylight. If it was daylight, it would have been a completely different story. They would have come back. I'd have said, hi, how you doing? You know, whatever. You don't go back at night. Right, especially past all the no trespassing signs and everything else. So they're, you know, they were, they're, don't shoot us, don't shoot us. <laughs> stuff, because I was, I was not in a good mood. 
And I said, look, I said, we've been hit a number of times here, catalytic converter theft. And I said, the, the thieves, you know, just have come back a, a number of times. So I said, I'm really on edge. Once they explain the situation, I calmed down, they calmed down. And I said, okay, I actually ended up having to pull them out, you know, of this here because they were stuck so bad. So I helped them, got them out and everything. And, and, uh, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just, I didn't mean to really scare you bad or whatever. And they said, no, you did the right thing. You know, I, we understand completely. Don't feel bad about it. Um, so it worked out, but I thought I had them that time. I thought for sure, you know, but, um, anybody out there, if, you know, we are certainly open to helping people and things, but if you ever come up here, think, think about it. You drive back in to a area like this at night, you're not sure whatever else. I mean, I have born and raised in the country. I've lived in the country all my life. I will never live in a city. Cities scare me badly. Um, I'm too much, almost like a wild animal to live in a city. Um, like the Dick Prennicky book, you know, One Man's Wilderness. In the end, here's some poem. And it, I remember the guy said, I'm like a fox that fears for my pelt <laughs> when I go into a city. Uh, yeah, I don't get along with cities, but, you know, there's different rules and whatever else there. People are up at night and things. You come out to the country area. If you'd ever come here, wait till daytime. Don't ever come back at night in here because anybody that comes back at night you're thinking to yourself okay they can only be back here for one reason and that's to do harm or whatever to steal or whatever so uh, uh, uh yeah, just interesting because my back is still in really bad shape too and um i didn't even feel the pain i was just the adrenaline was just pumping and and um so, but, you know, it brings up a couple other points really quickly that I want to say, and that is the thing of what if it had been a bad situation um, and I didn't have guns? I had no way to protect myself. Um, I don't have any kind of cell phone or whatever else. There's no way I could have called the police. And um, even if I had a cell phone, there's no police that are just patrolling the area or something like that. Uh, it'd have been terrible without firearms. If you're in a country that doesn't have guns, you know, okay, I understand, but it's that's a terrible thing. Um, private gun ownership is very important. And it was a situation where I fired three rounds as a warning shot. They proceeded to come back, and if they had been bad guys, I would have opened fire on them and eliminated the threat uh, to protect my wife and my son and my private property. Um, no question about it. And I fear God. I'm not afraid of, oh, you know, well, there's politicians and they're passing laws. I, the politicians are on their way to hell. Their damnation is just. I could care less. Um, God gave me the right to be able to defend myself. And I'm going to do that. And no politician is ever going to come along and say, we're taking your firearms from you. You're not taking my guns from me. Ever. <laughs> okay? And like I wanted to say here, um, I used a gun here just a, about three hours ago now. Um, we got up and we had breakfast and everything else. We're ready to go to the office to work. But uh, I used a gun this morning. I had a gun pointed at somebody and I was ready to pull the trigger. But it ended peacefully. See? And it's not, it's the kind of a gun that the media likes to demonize. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, the military style gun, I'll say it that way. A uh, very large caliber. I'm not a 556 guy, uh, 762 by 51. I'll just say it that way. If you're a gun guy, you know what I mean. Uh, I like big guns. Um, and, oh, the, the, your gun, if you're a gun owner, you're a murderer and things. No, I'm not. I fired warning shots, first of all, because I didn't want to hurt them. They proceeded to come back. That was a bad decision on their part. They should have just left at that point in time. I would have been okay with that. They came back, they got a, the gun pointed at them. And then they got stuck and, they, and I came out and I said, okay, you better start explaining yourself in so many words. Um, they explained, the situation de-escalated and everything worked out fine and I helped them out, put my guns away and things, helped them out and, and we were laughing about it when they left. You know, and they kept saying, oh, you, you know, you, you people back here are real bad, you know, P, bad A word. Uh, it's not why we're doing that. 
It's just we're we are sick and tired of people trying to come and rob from us. And the just the the tyrannical nature of people that are wicked. And now these people, you know, I'm not going to say that they were wicked, they were just stupid. You don't ever come back lanes at night. So uh, like I said, anybody that if you would if you ever come up here and all I think brother Brian and sister Catherine could help me and whatever else, I, wait till daytime, please. And I'm being serious, I'm not joking. Um, it could turn out really bad. I've had numerous situations. Um, actually, my brother-in-law, the one time when I was younger, uh, he thought it'd be funny to uh, tap on our downspout of my childhood home with a stick and then go hide in the weeds or whatever else. I had a gun. I, you know, hey, some nuts outside. I don't know what's going on here. And I, you never know. I'm not going to be a victim. That's how I was raised. My dad taught me that. My dad put, you know, had numerous people at gunpoint. Um, and my dad actually has an EMT the one time, I'll tell this little story. He actually had a shotgun in his face. He had an a emergency call or whatever else. Went up to this house, knocked on the door, the door opens, and a 12-gauge shotgun comes right out, sticks right in his face. And the guy says, get out of here. And my dad said, look. Uh, just we got a call. That's all I'm trying to do here. Just somebody need help. The guy said oh, it's fine We're taking care of it. Get out of here. My dad said, okay, sorry about that. Turn and walked away you, There are so many cases of guns being used like that in different right or wrong situations And there's no bloodshed and again the the stupid satanic liberal media They want to cover up that fact all gun owners are killers all guns are designed for murdering people and whatever else no, what about all the peaceful confrontations with guns? Where everything just works out and it's very, everybody's polite, everybody says, oh, let me explain, and, and it's fine. So, little rant there in defense of the Second Amendment. And it's not even really the Second Amendment, it's, it's called God-given rights. So, see my battery's about dead, so that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.